Praise the Lord, Christian Life Center. Let's all stand together this morning. Hallelujah. There's already a little a flow, a flow of prayer in this place. Some of us have come in and we just stepped right into the flow, but why don't we all join in today, right now, as one body and one mind and one accord, why don't we all step into that flow right now, that precious flow of the Holy Ghost. Let's all begin to lift our voices right now, Lord. Uh, we worship you today, Jesus, and we praise you today, Lord, uh, for the opportunity one more time, God, uh, to enter in to the house of the Lord, to come together, to come together, Lord, and to worship you and to praise you, God. Lord, we are grateful today. Uh, we're grateful today, Lord, uh, to be able, Lord, to worship with like-minded believers, uh, to call on the name of the Lord, hallelujah, to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. And right now, God, I ask that you would have your way this morning. Lord, have your way in every heart. Have your way in every mind, God. Whatever you desire to do today, Lord, we're on board, God. We make ourselves available to you today, Lord. I yield my heart today. I yield my mind, God. Whatever you desire, Lord, I'm all yours this morning, Jesus. I'm all yours this morning, God. Hallelujah. 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 Church, he's worthy of our all. He's worthy of all that we have. He's worthy of our very best. And, and for a few moments, why don't you just begin to pour it out to him for a few moments this morning. Why don't you pour it out before him, Lord? I worship you. Lord, I praise you. Jesus, I am grateful for you. Huh? I am thankful for the blood that was shed on Calvary. I'm thankful, Lord, that you woke me up this morning. I'm thankful, Lord, that you healed my body, Lord. I'm thankful for the things that you've done in my life, Lord. God, I'm thankful. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, church, all together, lift up your voice and clap your hands unto the Lord as the worship team comes. You may be seated if you like. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Let's praise his name today. He is worthy. God, we've come to lift you up. We've come to bless your holy name. You are worthy, Lord. How many know there's power in the blood of Jesus? Anybody thankful for that power, for that victory, for that freedom in the Holy Ghost that we feel here today? Hallelujah. Know it, sing it together with us today. Oh, would you be free from your burden of sin? Power. 
Jesus. Power to save. Power to deliver in the name of Jesus. Let's keep praising him today. He's worthy to be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Anybody excited about what God's been doing in our church lately? The revival that we're seeing? He's been pouring out his spirit and I'm believing him for greater things. Hallelujah. To come in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Worship with us this morning. church and make us whole. Ignite, transform, take us to a place we've never seen before. You've done the impossible. We've seen our mountains move before. Your word is unstoppable. With expectation we
Every word, God, will be fulfilled. We're standing on your promises. We're standing on your promises. And we're praying, Lord, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come, Lord, in this place. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship him. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is more than just a song, but it's a declaration, amen. With the power and authority that we have from the Holy Ghost, we are declaring, Lord, let your kingdom come. And we're going to pray that for our city this morning. We're going to declare for this state, for this nation. We're going to proclaim, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Right now, church, let's join together in the same vein. Lord, we come before you in faith this morning, God. We stand in the gap for the city of Stockton, and we declare that this is your kingdom. We declare Stockton, California, for the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we don't stop there, but we declare this state. We declare this nation that revival is here. Revival is now. Hallelujah. Lord, as your word says in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, God. We believe you for it this morning. And more than that, we declare it today in Jesus' name. We declare it today in Jesus' name. Lord, pour out your spirit on the highest government official. Oh, Lord, to the poorest beggar on the street, God. Lord, let your spirit be poured out like never before, God. Prepare each and every one of us as lay for the harvest God in the name of Jesus we worship you for it today we praise you for it today hallelujah if you believe he's doing what doing it why don't you clap your hands unto God why don't you lift your lift up your voice hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus amen with that same faith we're going to present our needs to the Lord this morning. Let us remember Sister Mullins. She's going into surgery this week for her back. So we're going to pray that the Lord would have his way, that she would come through the surgery with flying colors. There'd be no complications in Jesus' name. If you have a need this morning, I know a healer. I know a deliverer. He's in the house. Amen. Jesus is here. He's present to heal. He's present to deliver. He's present to set free. If you have a need this morning, why don't you lift up your hand in faith as a sign of faith. God, I don't want you to pass me by this morning, Jesus. Lord, I don't want you to pass me by, but here I am, God. Here I am. Church, you see the needs. You see the hands represented. Why don't you extend a hand towards them? Lord Jesus, we come before you one more time, God. We come before you in Jesus' name asking that you would touch every need in the house this morning, God. Lord, heal where healing is needed. Deliver where deliverance is needed, God. Provide where provision is needed, Lord. And we pray for Sister Mullins, God. Lord, that the surgery this week would go smoothly in Jesus' name. Lord, let your hand guide the surgeon's hand in Jesus' name. There would be no complications in the name of Jesus. We believe you for it today and we praise you for it today Lord uh, we thank you God for the work you're doing even now as we pray Lord let there be testimonies that come forth uh, from the prayers this morning in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah 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 amen amen I feel the Lord this morning, hallelujah. You all may be seated just for a moment. Praise God. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? <laughs> Praise the Lord, no, no better place, no place I'd rather be, hallelujah. We've got a few announcements this morning. The ladies ministry will be continuing their powerful Give God 12. Praise God. How's it been, ladies? Has it been good? That's what I like to hear. Right here at 5 p.m., right here at the 99th facility. I'm sure if you haven't been able to make it, they would welcome a newcomer with open arms right here at 5 p.m. Amen. Our Easter choir, that's a week away. Easter is in one week. Praise the Lord. We have two rehearsals left, 6.30 p.m. on Thursday and 10 a.m. on Saturday, both right here in the choir loft behind us. So be sure to be there, 6.30 p.m. Thursday, 
and 10 a.m. Saturday. Praise God. Men's retreat. I think we, we, we fixed the name of men's conference. Amen. It's men's conference right here at, in the 99 at the West Lane. Brother Tim Gaddy's going to be with us. He's going to be ministering. It is of no cost, but make sure to bring an offering. We got to cover the cost of the conference itself, but we'll be sure to have a powerful time in the Holy Ghost, men. We're going to get together in fellowship, and, and we're going to tear some strongholds down in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Coming up May 15th, we have our baby dedication. May 15th, our baby dedication. That's exciting. I've seen many new born babies, so I believe we're going to have a full altar. Amen. We're going to have a full altar as we do what's biblical. We're going to dedicate our children to the Lord. Amen. So if you want to register your child, be sure to do that. You'll see on the flyer where you can register your child for baby dedication. Again, that is May 15th. Mark your calendars and be sure to uh, uh, make the proper accommodations for that. Acts 29. I think we got a youth camp coming up. Amen. All right. Ju June 6th through the 10th at Old Oak Ranch, the old stopping grounds. Parents, it's 325. That's a small price to pay for your child to be on fire for the Lord, to get alone with Jesus. I know that there are fundraisers going on because I bought some enchiladas. Amen. So be sure if, if someone comes up with a, a sheet, one of these precious youth, buy an enchilada lunch. Help them out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. With that, we're going to go into our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Hallelujah. Let's all stand in the building this morning. One more announcement I forgot. Newcomers and visitors, we, we are happy to see you. Why don't you give them a, a hand for our newcomers, our visitors. Praise God. To my right and your left, we have what is called the Genesis Room. I invite you to come and meet with the pastor, meet with those who are in the Genesis Room. If you have any questions, if you want to know what CLC is all about, we are happy to answer your questions. Also, get a nice cup of coffee and a time of fellowship after service. We would love to see you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's time for our Sunday morning tithe and offering. If you have it, why don't you grab it? Amen. And let's present it to the Lord this morning. Jesus, we are grateful to give to your kingdom, Lord. We are thankful for all that you have given us, God. We pray, Lord, that you would bless this offering, Lord. Use it to strengthen your kingdom this morning, God. And in the name of Jesus, I pray you would bless every giver this morning. And as they give, Lord, bless them and pour out a blessing that they cannot contain in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are giving with cheerfulness, God, a cheerful heart this morning. We are grateful, Lord, to be able to bless your name with what you have given us in Jesus' name. Lord, bless the offering in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. On the lower floor, you can march. In the balcony, they will wait on you. God bless you as you give this morning.
to receive what God has for you this morning. I am as well. I'm excited for it. Can we stand to our feet this morning? And I just want you to stand today and help me pray that God would have his way. I need the help of the Lord today in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit. Amen. I want to preach the word of God as God desires it. And I as well am in need to receive his word, his living word. Today, the word of God says that his word is quick, it's alive, it is powerful, and it's sharper than any double-edged sword, and it searches our hearts, the intents of our hearts and our spirits. It divides and it organizes. It tears down, it builds up. It tears out and it plants. That's what the Word of God does. Amen. Can we pray that God would have His way this morning? Father, we love you. We praise you, God. We give you all the glory, Lord God, for all that you are doing in our midst today. Father, we thank you, Father, for your spirit. We thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost, God, that spirit that has filled our lives, God, that spirit that has brought new life into us. Father, we thank you. I pray that in the Holy Ghost, Lord, you would just... I pray that you would just align our hearts with you, God, today. Hey, Wolosha. That you would just align our minds with you, our thoughts with you, God, our spirits, God. That you would bind us together in one accord and point us toward you, God, today. That you would bind us, God, in one mind, in one spirit, and point us towards you, Lord. With our hearts and our minds, God, open, Father, to the move of your word, God. To the tearing down of your word. To the building up of your word, God. Let it be so. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you all the glory for it today. Can we just give them glory right now? Just give them a joyful noise. Give them a praise of gratitude today. We love you. We thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost today. Amen, amen, amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Just open up your Bibles today. And we're going to start off in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your spirit. Thank you for the Holy Ghost today. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 through 10 says, For it is written... Hallelujah. In the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle the ox, an ox, while it treads about the grain, out the grain. Hallelujah. I guess I'm in the wrong Corinthians here. We've got to be in. <laughs> That's all right. Hallelujah. Ah, this is the one I'm looking for. All right, 2 Corinthians. <laughs> Well, it's got, it has to happen to everybody at least one time, right? <laughs> Second Corinthians, praise God, we're here. Second Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, we love you, Jesus. Amen. out here. I'm so sorry. I am. It looks like, give me one moment here. I want to have the right scripture for you all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord God. Help me, Holy Ghost. We need you today. Yeah, here we go. Uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, <laughs> verse 9. Amen. But as it is written, all right, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Hmm. 
But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Somebody say his spirit. spirit. Yes. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Let's jump down to verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Wow. See, the Apostle Paul is attempting to teach us today or in the book of Corinthians about the difference between the way the rational mind of man thinks and the way that the spirit moves in our lives And allows us to come to knowledge of things. And he separates the very nature of the human mind from the move of the spirit. From the way that the spirit communicates. And this is really important because it becomes difficult for us as we live in this world being connected to a world of natural laws. Laws that oftentimes follow Uh, very clear formulas. For example, when you get hungry, you want to eat. So you go and you get food. It is a natural occurrence in the body that requires a very rational, a very real, a very logical solution. Okay? Now, some of us don't use that solution quite too well, all right, with eating. Okay? We need the Lord's help in our lives. But... There are needs in this world. There are requirements in this world that require our minds to get involved in the way that the world functions. It keeps us connected, connected to very basic ways of thinking. And in this nature of living in the world and having to interact with the world and, and paying uh, up to $6 of gas, all right, uh, $6 per gallon for gas and thinking, okay, how much is that going to cost me today? We're involved in the worries of this world, in the concerns of this world, in a very natural way of thinking. We're required to live in this world. But then the Word of God tells us something like this, that when When God, he's attempting to communicate to us and we're attempting to feel after or encounter the will of God for our lives. The word of God tells us here that there is a difference between the way that you calculate how much money you're going to spend for groceries and trying to find the will of God for your life. And trying to see the will of God and understand the way that God operates. There is a separation between both of these two natural things. And this is where we get in trouble, right? Because many times God is operating on a higher plane. He's operating on a higher level. He's operating further than what our physical eyes can see. And he's working in ways that our understanding of man cannot grasp and understand. And we got to be careful because if we begin to handle the word of God, and when if we begin to handle the very promises that God has given us, we will begin to become the Discouraged because we're trying to grasp, uh, calculate as if the will of God were some type of grocery list uh, that you can calculate and say, This is how much I'm going to pay, and this is what I got to do. I got to go to aisle six, and I got to go to aisle 24. And I, we're trying to calculate the promises of God, and we become discouraged when we find we're a little bit lacking here. 
We don't have quite enough to make it. We don't know what direction to go. The things that God has promised me and the things that God has promised you, they are beyond human calculation. Therefore, the Apostle Paul tells us uh, that eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it even entered into the heart of man all of the things that God has prepared for those who love him. What does that mean? That means you haven't seen everything. You can't even make sense of it with your eyes and neither has it even entered into the heart of man what does that mean it means you can't even imagine the will of God you can't even imagine everything that is coming in your future God has a plan for your life it is a wonderful plan it's not a plan of destruction it's not a plan of failure it's not a plan that's going to leave you without but God he has a wonderful plan to you that when you go through that plan you will be able to look back and say if it hadn't been for the Lord who was on my side you will be able to look back and say I have come this far by faith leaning on the Lord and it's not by my own will by my own strength because but it's because God is a provider it's because God is a healer it's because God is a way maker where there is no way. He's the God who can split the Red Sea. He's the God who can split the River Jordan. He's the God who is able to do what no man can do. And what the Apostle Paul is telling the church is that you have to make sure you live your life understanding that living for God is always going to be this, be this way. This is why we live by faith and not by because I hasn't seen nor ear heard all the things. But in verse 10 it says, but they are revealed. But they are made known to us. They are manifest, they're revealed to us through the Spirit. When we begin to get in the Holy Ghost, we begin to feel things. We begin to become aware of things. Why? Because the Spirit, it searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. What is it like then to begin to feel things in the Spirit? I oftentimes compare it to as if you're walking into a dark room and you can't really make out with your eyes what is in that dark room. But as you are moving around and feeling around, if you've ever lost power in your house in the middle of the night, you're trying to feel around. I know more or less. And you begin to feel the wall. You can, you can see, where, you can feel where the doorknob is. And you can feel where the switch is. And you can feel around. And, you, rem and you, be, you know the objects, not because you see them, but because you feel them. And you, don't, you can't quite make out the colors. You can't make out the shape. But you know that there is something there. And that's exactly what happens when we get in the Spirit. When we get in the Holy Ghost and we begin to pray and we begin to, we get, begin to come into the presence of God and he moves on our hearts and our minds, we begin to feel around about things of our future. We begin to feel around about the plans of God for us. And that's what we call faith. We begin to feel the substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. I can't see it, but I got evidence that is there. And if anybody asks me, his, how do you know? Know that it's there how do you know that everything is going to be all right all I can tell them is that I've been in the presence of the Lord and I felt around for myself and I know that God has a plan for me and I know that God has a way what is that way it doesn't make sense hey, you trust me it doesn't make sense to me either but I've been in the presence of God and I know I know it for myself and so to understand this nature of the Spirit and feeling around in the Holy Ghost and being made to know things that you have not seen for yourself is actually very related even to the nature of faith. Even, even to the very nature of faith. I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 2, 1 through 3. It says, Hebrews 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. 
By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. That is very powerful. What, is this spe- what this is speaking about is the nature of the very word of God, the authority of God to be able to create. And we know in the beginning of time, in the beginning of the the universe, God made everything out of nothing. There was no physical or material word, worlds or universe. There wasn't a material reality. But when there was nothing and there was only emptiness, the word of God was released into the atmosphere. And out of nothing, something came to be. This is why God is described as the eternal father, because he is one who can create out of nothing and bring to being something that absolutely does not exist. This is the very nature of God. He is able to speak and something happens, which is why if we live by the nature of this world and by the rules of the science of the world, we're not going to be able to find the will of God or how God is orchestrating your future because there are things that will exist that do not exist right now there are things that God is about to bring into existence in your life that no scientist can account for that no natural law can account for that no natural thing can make sense of there are things that will show up not because some type of thing happened within this world but because God has willed it to be so He has willed it to be so. He wants it to be so, and therefore it will be. This is the the amazing magnitude of the power of God. He wills it to be so. And it becomes, and it becomes manifest. You see, when God spoke in the very beginning, let there be light. He spoke these simple words. He spoke this simple concept, let there be light. And when God spoke, let there be light, he didn't have to speak all of the science and the equations behind the waves of light into existence. When he said, let there be life, let the plants come from the ground, he didn't have to say with his words, let these proteins gather with those other proteins and let this cell begin to multiply and begin to take and photosynthesis. He didn't have to speak all those detailed words. Why? Because reality, it, it reacted to the intention and the will of God such that God only had to speak a simple thing and a complex reaction had to take place. What does that mean? That means it doesn't matter how complicated your life is and how complicated your situation is. All you need is a simple word from God. You need a a call of a You need an expression of the Lord upon your life. And from the simple voice of God, you will begin to feel a complicated inner working of the will of God in your life. He will begin to work out the complexities of your bank account. He will work out the complexities of your life, the complexities of your home, the complexities of your family, the complexities of all because you have a God who knows how to speak. He speaks a very simple word and something has to happen. This is is very connected even... Let's go to verse 6 here. In Hebrews chapter 11, speaking about faith. And this is how important our faith is and our understanding of faith is. But without faith, it is impossible. Somebody say impossible. That's a very absolute word. There is no give on that word. There's no leeway. There's no space to fit anything else. It is impossible. So then we have to be very aware of what is about to be said in the next phrase. Because what we know now is that there is no leeway. 
Without faith, it is impossible to do what? To please Him. To please God. For he who comes to God must, here's the answer, believe that He is. Wow. And that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Let's break that down. Why? Because to please Him, you need to first believe that He is, that He exists, that He is an existing being. But it is a very specific kind of existence. It is a very specific kind of being that we must believe. Why am I saying this? Because we have a very common teaching in many areas of universities, higher education, high schools that say that there is a God, but every religion serves the same God. It's a very common and I would say naive mentality that the God that we serve described in this Bible is similar to the God that is described even in the Quran, even in the books of Buddhists, in the documents of Buddhists who speak of this God. Can I tell you that the identity of God is never separate from who He is and how He manifests Himself. It is never separate. It is one and the same. To understand who God is, you need to know what He does. And the way that God functions in those documents is not the way that God functions in the Word of God, which is why we can never say that the God that they serve is the same God that we serve. We serve the God of the Holy Book. We serve the God of the Word. This is the God that we serve. Why? Because we must believe that He is. Now, what is that connected to? I believe that this is connected to the book of Exodus. When the book of Exodus in Moses, he asks God, he says, look, how, who should I tell the people of Israel that you are? What is your name? And God responds to Moses uh, telling him, to, I am that I am. When you go to them, tell them that I am. What does this mean? This means that I am who I will be. I am whatever I need to be. I am and will be whatever you need me to be and this is the kind of God that I am. Therefore, you cannot describe me by these simple definitions, even though that God is a creator, even though God is a wonderful creator. He is still greater than all of the creation, and we get to a point of understanding God where we understand that He is more than the creator of the universe. He simply is that He is. He's the great I am, and there is is nothing that can appropriately describe him there is nothing that can appropriately describe him and so as we live for God we end up coming into this next level of revelation of who God is that it's not bound uh, by what we have seen him to be but we come to a place of understanding God that he is more than we could ever imagine because I had not seen nor ear heard we begin to understand that there's, there's so much more to God than we have ever seen. You may think you know that God is good now, but there comes a point in time where you realize, I know that I haven't even begun to taste the goodness of God. You see, when you, if you reflect back and you look back in your life uh, and you compare your understanding of the greatness of God, of the goodness of God five years ago today, uh, you will well understand that you may be using the same words, God is good, uh, but you know the meaning of those words uh, are completely different uh, than what they meant five years ago because so much has happened uh, where God has manifested His grace, His goodness in the past five years uh, that that it's not even the same word. I'm saying the same word with my lips, but in my spirit, the way that I understand the goodness of God today is completely different. Why? Because God, He is a multi, multi-facetedly good. He is not just 
good, but he is manifold. He has manifold goodness. He has a kodosha. He has exponential goodness. It's good upon good, 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 everlast to everlast into affinity. That's why I can't contain it when I praise him. I can't contain it when I worship because I'm saying God is good infinity. God is good from everlast to everlast, from beginning to end. He is good from alpha to omega. He is good. And I see it in my spirit. I see it in the Holy Ghost. God is powerful. God is holy. He is holy. See, that's why the angels, when they worship, worship God. All they say, holy, 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 holy. You got to worship him. You got to praise him. Because he is holy and beyond holy. He is holy and manifoldly so. So we end up going into manifold worship. It's like this worship that's not only tied down to what God has done, but everything that we know that God can be that we have not seen, that we have not known. I worship God for the God that I know and the God that I have not known yet. Hey, this is what we call even praising in advance. When we get into a situation and by faith, in the Holy Ghost, we begin to feel the provision of God and we begin to praise Him in advance. There's a song that talks about that. And what is this called? This is like a prophetic praise. You begin to praise God for a victory that you already haven't experienced. You begin to praise God for something that hasn't even come to pass. It's a prophetic worship. Why? Because I know I may not know the answers, but I know the answer is there. And I just got to wait because it's going to come to pass. And meanwhile, it comes to pass. I'm already thanking Him for making a way. I'm already praising Him because he's already healed he's already done it he's already he's already made a way I got some people praising him in advance already because you know what I'm talking about you know what it feels like to feel it in the spirit I haven't seen it with my eyes but I've been made known it's been made known to me in the Holy Ghost. Ooh. I just feel like doing that for a moment. Why don't somebody throw up your hands and worship God? Not just for what he has done, but what ye will do. We love you, God. We love you. You are the I am. You are the great I am that I am. You are the Holy Father, the eternal Father, a God of wonder. A God of wonder. A God of wonder. A God of wonder. Oh, He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Hey. Oh, Lord, oh my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands has made, worlds that we don't know, worlds echo that we've never seen, but they exist out there in the universe, the wonder of all the things that God has done and created. Oh, you feel that in the Holy Ghost? Do you know what's going on in the Spirit? Your spirit is searching the deep things of God right now. In your heart, you're touching it. You're saying, I feel the greatness of God. <laughs> I feel the greatness of God. I feel the goodness of the holiness. I touch it, but I haven't seen it. But I feel it in my spirit. Can we worship him for a few more moments? Come on, can we give him glory? Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. The great I am. The great I am. Uh, the great I am. Yes, you are. He is. He is. He is. <laughs> For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Who knew in such a small expression, in such a profound power, you must believe that he is. He is the great I am. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What does this mean? This means that the God that is, the God that is infinitely powerful and wonderfully holy, he still manifests in our present time. And he makes himself known in this present time. Just like there are many teachings in this world that say the same God we serve is the God of every other religion, which is false. They also say there may be a God, but we cannot know him. They often say it's called agnosticism. Oh, there is a God, but how do you know the God that you serve is real? They begin to make these assertions about a God who may be so powerful, but there is no one who truly knows him. What this assumes is that not only do we not have the ability to perceive him, but also that God is too weak to make himself known. That he is not powerful enough to make himself known in reality. That is what they're saying. The God that they serve, the God that they believe in, this God that cannot be known, also reverse-wise, is a God that is so impotent that he cannot make himself known. And that is not the God that we serve. Because if you are going to please the Lord, then you must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder. What does that mean? That he doesn't just sit in eternal throne, but he also manifests himself in our lives. And he shows himself to us. And he reveals himself to us. And he comes down in his power. And he splits the Red Sea. And he comes down in his power. And in Jesus, he heals the sick. And he casts out demons. He is a God that responds. What is that saying? Is that he's not only a God, but he's a right now God. He is a right now God. He isn't just a yesterday God. He isn't just a tomorrow God. He's a right now God. And if you want to feel him, you can feel him right now. And if you want a touch from God, you can get that touch right now. And if you need a miracle, you can get the miracle right now. Because he is a rewarder. He can make himself known. He is a real God. He is not a fake God. He's not a false God made of stone. He is not a God made of silver. He's not a God that you can put on your neck. He's a mighty God who responds to our prayer. He korobo shalabaha. He yoroboboko. You see, this statement is not just about rewards. It's about the power of God to manifest, to demonstrate, and show right now that he's a powerful God. Does anyone know that today? Ooh. You must believe. You may take your seats. What's so powerful is that this same identity of the great I am was manifested in a real man. His name is Jesus. And Jesus being the manifestation of God in flesh. The eternal God from everlast to everlast come in body in a right now point in time in a specific manifestation. Okay. In that form, Jesus himself said, they ask. They ask him a question, and Jesus responds by saying, before Abraham was, I am. You see, in looking at that statement, it, it seems to be grammatically incorrect. But the existence of God doesn't fit the grammar of our English language. <laughs> That's why 
Jesus Christ didn't say, before Abraham was, I was. I existed back then. No, no. Before Abraham was, I am. I am. You know what he is saying? He's saying, don't get confused by this manifestation in the present time. I am still connected to the eternal God, and I am the manifestation of the eternal God who does not live in present time, but he lives in the past, in the present, and in the future, all at the same time. The God that we serve is a God that is not bound by time. That's why Jesus not only was, he is the great I am. He is the I am in the flesh. Hey. You see, this is why I believe even we receive these revelations of the word of God. We begin to feel the presence of God. Even when we read stories in the past. And even when we read about things and eschatology that will happen in the future. It's because when we get into the spirit of God, we get into the realm of the great I am. The realm of the eternal place. And we begin to feel around things that happened before and things that will happen in the future. And we feel the manifestation station of the power of God in the present and we can learn from what God has done and what God will do and we know that all of that power was manifested in Jesus Christ hallelujah 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 this is the God that we serve this is why and this gives meaning to our understanding of Scripture in 1 Corinthians, it gives such profound, more profound meaning to that. In 1 Corinthians, where it says that you cannot understand the things of the Spirit with the mind of man. You cannot understand it with the way, the rationality of this world. Why? Because the thoughts, as, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so the thoughts of God are higher than your thoughts. And His ways, they're higher than your ways. You cannot reach them. You cannot touch them. And thank God, because if I were living life my own way, I would have ruined it by now. Does anybody have that testimony? If I would have lived life my own way, I would have destroyed things. Why? Because I make decisions based on what I can see. Has anyone ever done something that you regret because you didn't know the whole story? Has anyone said something that you regret because you didn't know the whole story? You've made decisions that have destroyed your life because you didn't know the whole story. Why? Because you're not an all-knowing being. You don't know what you don't know. You're stuck with your ignorance. And thank God that I don't live my life based on what I can see. But I live my life based on what God has told me. And what God has expressed to me. Because only He is the all-knowing God. Only He is the omniscient God. Only He knows all things. Yeah. So you don't have to convince me that believing in God is crazy. You don't have to convince me that believing in God and His Word doesn't make sense. You don't have to convince me that I'm a fool for believing in God. Because even Corinthians says that our belief in God, our faith is foolishness to the world. You don't have to convince me. I already know that it's crazy. I already know that it doesn't make sense. But that's how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to make sense with your mind. It's not supposed to make sense to the rational believing. This is a crazy thing and I know it. But can I tell you, it may be crazy, but it works. It may be something you can't understand, but it's real. It may be something you can't make sense of, but the power of God that moves through faith is real. And that's why nobody can convince me to not believe. Because the word of God, taste and see that the Lord is good. I have tasted it and I have seen it for myself. I have experienced that God is good for myself. And not even in ways that make sense. In all the ways that don't make sense. If it weren't for God, I shouldn't be here. If it weren't for God, I should have lost my mind already. 
If it weren't for God, I should be dead in my sins and destroyed in my sins. And people who knew me and knew you in your past, they say, how did you make, you look so clean. You look so well put, how did you make it? I knew you when you were back. It doesn't make sense. And it's because I serve a God, he doesn't make sense. I serve a God that doesn't make sense of the world that we live in. But he manifests and he changes and he moves. Oh, I feel him in this place today. I feel him in this place. You see, this is why as well, the word of God, I believe the word of God says in Luke chapter 18, verses 15 through 17, that if you are to receive the kingdom of God, you need to receive it as a child. Why? Why? Because a child believes. It is an innocent belief that doesn't care about asking questions. A child doesn't ask questions of why. When somebody in authority tells them that it is the way that it is, a child simply believes. And they stand in awe and wonder at things that we know aren't real, but yet they Believe is real. We as adults can talk to children and say, look, this individual exists. Look, this, this superhero exists. And they will say, oh, no way. Oh, that's real? Wow. And their emotions, their heart, they stand in wonder of things that are just fantasy. Why? Because a child believes. A child trusts in the authority. And the child doesn't try to make sense of what is being told. That is why to even receive the kingdom, to be able, able to be even to perceive and know and understand the kingdom of God, we must receive it as a child. As a child receives a story, we must believe disconnected from our rational mind and with our imagination, touch the greatness of God. You see, this is why I believe the word of God told the people of Israel, I'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey. When have you seen milk come out from the ground? When have you seen rivers flow with honey? You have never seen it with your eyes. You've never known it. But what God was saying is imagine, imagine a land that flows with milk. Imagine a land where honey is coming down from the mountains and it's giving you to eat and you're getting the basic needs met. Why? Because there is a land. It's flowing like a child. They were supposed to hold the promises of God with wonder and say, God is going to give us a place. It, 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 it is an ancient time candy land. God is going to give us a candy land. God is going to give us popsicles growing from the ground. And we're not supposed to touch those things with our rational mind. We're not supposed to even try. We're supposed to stand in wonder and say, God, let it be so even as you have spoken. Let it be so even as you have said it. So if God tells you that if you had faith uh, the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Uh, you're supposed to, oh, shama, stand in wonder and say, no. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you, is this true that I don't have to accept my current circumstance? Is this true that all I have to do, hey, all I have to do is believe and believe in the name of God. Believe in the word of God. Hey, wow.
You see, ah, Lord. Yeah, many times this, this concept of believing like a child is the very thing that works against us for two reasons. One is that, to be honest, our children are losing the ability to fantasize and imagine. They're losing the ability. You talk to any school teacher in elementary school, they will tell you that children are becoming less and less imaginative. They can't grasp playing with fantasies. And I can tell you why. It's because they spend a lot of their time not interacting with other people, but interacting with inanimate objects that give fantasies for them. They don't produce imaginations themselves. They're fed imaginations through media and entertainment when they spend all day just receiving it from something that can't speak back to them. They are not in a creative space. Psychologists have come to understand that play, children playing around with each other is actually one of the most essential aspects of healthy mental practice because it is in playing around with friends when you're young that you realize the rules of playing you cannot spend the whole time just making up the story by yourself you need to give and take and play i remember playing cowboys and indians when i was a little child and my and and we played cowboys and indians sometimes i was an indian and when when my friend wanted to be an indian then i was a cowboy it, and, and I had to do it, right? Even though I loved being an Indian because I like throwing tomahawks. <laughs> I loved it. I loved throwing tomahawks and playing and, you know, making up things with my mind and imagination, right? But if I didn't let my friend become an Indian, then he wouldn't play with me. And if I took the whole storyline, then he wouldn't want to play with me. And because children are not having this playful interaction with each other, I am not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. We are creating little sociopaths who do. I'm not, I'm not kidding. They do. I'm serious. They don't know how to emotionally interact with each other. They're mean. They're mean spirited because they never learned as a child, as an infant, as a toddler, as a, they never learned the rules of play. And so when we see scriptures, then it affects our interpretation of scripture. Because when children grow up to be young adults and youth and they read that you have to receive the kingdom of a child, all they know of their child is a tablet. Oh, so should I receive it like a tablet? Should I receive it? Like, no, no, no. Receive it with your fantasy. Receive it with your imagination. Receive it with your wonder. Receive it with your soul that is full of wonder. And that can only be a, 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 actually achieved if a child has a healthy, they grow up healthy. And they grow up imagining and fantasizing and wondering about great things and making it up in their minds so that when they hear things like God was going to give them a land of milk and honey, they're able to say, wow, wonder, amazing. You see, some of us, maybe we need to sit down and study children as they play with each other and take notes because we can take some very spiritual, great spiritual insight, but just looking at them and seeing them live and how they actually react when, they're, when they think that there's hot lava and they're trying to stand on top of all the furniture. And if they fall in the lava, they, ah, they're burning and they're angry. You know what I mean? It's wonderful. It's amazing. Because that same character, when we take it to the Word of God, and we hear the stories of the Old Testament with our hearts and our minds. We can get involved and say, wow, that is so wonderful. Three years without rain and without, and then the word of God is spoken and the rain comes down. And Elijah goes, he goes out to the wilderness and, and there's a great earthquake and there's a great, and then a whirlwind. But then in the silence, the word of God speaks to Elijah and he wraps his mantle around his head so that he would not see and we're able to build this in our minds because we can fantasize and with wonder and believe in the word of God so that when we hear stories of a great whale that swallowed Jonah we're not caught off guard and say how is that possible no but we say that if the word of God says it then I believe it and the whale swallowed him whole and he stayed there for three days and he spit him out and he went and he prophesied we're supposed to handle the word of God with wonder 
with wonder and marvel. And also, there's another aspect of childhood that has greatly been, been affected and affects our ability to believe God as a child. And that is because many times it is from childhood, especially in this day and age, where we receive our greatest disappointments within life. We receive our greatest hurts. We receive those greatest moments of disappointment that actually end up stifling wonder. And they stifle mind, the heart of a child. This is why when children, they go through very traumatic things within their childhood, we often say that they had to grow up faster than they were supposed to because they were put in situations where fantasies, they couldn't, they couldn't live like a child, as a regular child. They were forced into very painful situations that snapped them out of fantasy and snapped them out of imagination that's so critical in that tender time period. Yeah, I remember... A story, and I, I asked my wife if I could tell this story. It's such, she shared it a few times. Uh, it's part of her testimony. There's a, a very impactful thing that happened to her when she was a child, and it had to do with her father. Her father was not part of her life for most of her life from a very young age. I believe he was about four years old. And there was a time when her father had agreed to pick her up and she said that she remembers her mom working in the garden in the back and working in the front and how she got ready. She got ready with a cute little dress and those, those cute little socks with the florals almost look like ballerina socks. You guys know what I'm talking about? And she's sitting outside in the front porch with her ballerina socks and her, and her red dress. And I can imagine her feet kicking on the, on the seat waiting for her father. And her father never shows up that day, he never shows up. And from that point on, instead of having a wonderful memory, there is only the memory of being abandoned. There's only the memory of a father who said he was going to show up and getting prepared for that moment and wanting to see her father and that father never coming to. And then when the word of God comes later on in life and says that he is a father and he is a faithful father, it is those very memories in childhood that end up working against us and our understanding of what our heavenly father should be for us we begin to take the very disappointment that we felt that we feel in that moment in time and we point it to God so it's hard for us to believe as a child because some of us didn't even have a childhood some of us were destroyed as a child and we read this word we say how is it what is it to believe like a child what is it to believe with wonder and can I tell you if there's anybody in this building this morning anybody in this building you have been hurt from childhood and you don't have the ability to feel what it's like to believe like a child God wants to bless you with a renewed innocence about the world a renewed purity in your spirit because can I tell you God he is able to heal he is able to restore and you all see my wife she still knows how to worship and she still knows how to believe in God why why? Because God is a healer and he can restore even those most broken past, even the most broken situations. And he wants us to be healed. Why? Because if we're going to receive the kingdom, we have to receive it with the purity of a child. With the purity of believing. With the purity of holding and wonder the things of God. Not with the disappointment of our past, but the, with the faith that God is going to come through. Because faith requires believing in things that you have not seen. It requires believing in ways that you haven't known. And that becomes very vulnerable. Very vulnerable when all you're used to is people letting you down. It, be, it makes you feel very vulnerable when you, all you have felt is disappointment in your life. I got, I don't know if I can believe in you. I don't know if I can trust in you for this. But understand that it's very important that you learn how to believe in God. Because if you're even going to please Him, you must believe that He is. That He exists. And He is a rewarder. He coach I feel the whole he's the a rewarder he is going to make himself known to you 
And you know, this doesn't mean that many times we won't feel a sense of disappointment towards God. Why? Because sometimes God doesn't show up in the ways that we think he's going to show up. The Lord knows that I have promises. My wife and I, we have promises that we have not seen yet. And it has not shown up the way that we have expected it to show up. But I can tell you for certain, when we look back in our life, we can see all of the wonderful ways that God has been faithful. Faithful, and God has manifested his love and his goodness and his presence. Isn't that right? We've received miracles in our life. The touch of God is evident in our life. And you know what testifies about that the most? That we are still here. That we are still worshiping God and serving the Lord. Look back on your life. You may have a need right now. You don't quite understand why or how it's going to work out. But look back on your life. You're going to see the fingerprint of God the signature of God on your life his love upon you his mercy upon you his grace upon you and all he's asking for you is to take all those testimonies all the ways that God has worked in your life and begin to point them towards the future and say God I may not know how you're going to work it out but I'm deciding today to believe I'm deciding today to believe. I'm making it up in my heart to believe. I'm making it up in my mind to believe. And I'm trying today, God, to believe as a child. I'm trying today, God, I want to believe that you are. You are the great I am. You will be everything that I need you to be. Can we stand to our feet today? The Word of God is so wonderful. It's so powerful. But many times it's not until that great and powerful Word touches a real place in our hearts that we don't receive that change that God wants to bring about in our lives. God wants to touch the most vulnerable places of your faith. And if you have been struggling to believe in God, I'm here to tell you that the God that you serve, He is the great I Am. He will be whatever you need him to be in your life if you just believe. And if your rational mind is still rejecting it, that's okay. That's all right because it's not supposed to make sense to your mind. In many ways, you got to forget your thinking. Come up to this altar. Raise your hands and say, God, I just believe. You just got to be willing to come and say, God... There's a very powerful prayer that actually gives us a very practical way of approaching this. When Jesus Christ asked the man, do you believe? He said, I believe. Help my unbelief. There's a part of me that believes. But God, even a hey, help that part of me that's, that is struggling to believe. And you know what God is going to do? He's going to restore the innocence of faith to you. He's going to restore that childlike faith in your heart and your mind. So many of us, we've gotten, we've gotten muddled with the complicated issues of our situations. They are very complicated. They are. Some of you have very hard things that you're going through. They require a lot of thinking. They require a lot of reflecting. And God's saying, just let go of that this morning. Let go of that. Be willing to give that to me and let me speak a simple word. That will bring about life. It will bring about a way to your complicated situation. But someone has to dare to believe. Does anyone want that this morning? Come on. Does anybody want that this morning? Can we come up to this altar and pray today? <laughs> God's going to help you to believe today. He's going to give you the wonder of faith once again. He's going to restore a wonderful faith to your heart. Open up your spirit this morning. Open up your heart. Open up your heart to a wonderful faith. This morning, open up your heart to a faith that is willing to wonder at the babashia. A faith that is willing to wonder of the goodness of God. 
It's willing to hold on to the promises of God. A faith that is willing to hold on to the goodness of God. Hey, receive it this morning. It's flowing in this altar. It's flowing. Hey, Korobo Sharababa. It's flowing in this altar this morning. It's flowing in this place. God is pouring out hope today. God is pouring out hope today. God is pouring out faith today. God is helping you to believe. somebody receive it today come on somebody receive it let yourself believe let yourself believe give up your vulnerabilities I feel it God bring life to our faith today God hey Kodobo somebody stand in wonder at the greatness of God somebody stand in wonder at the ways that God he's gonna make himself known to you today so touch me now, touch me now, there's nothing you can do. There's no one you can say, no trials too big for you. So touch me now, touch me now, there's nothing you can do. No there's no one you can say, no trials. I receive my miracle, I cling to my healing right now, right now. I believe the impossible, I receive, I receive my miracle, I cling to my healing right now, right now. I believe, I believe the impossible, I receive, I receive Touch me now, touch me now, there's nothing you can do. There's no one you can say, no trials to no be for you. So touch me now, touch me now. I believe the impossible. I receive my miracle. I I receive my miracle. I cling to my healing right now, right now. I believe the impossible. I receive my miracle.